Welcome to the fourth mission of the playthrough series, um, Historical Scripted Campaign Steel Birds. And we're back over the skies of Kuban in our trusty Focke Wolf 190. And I think the mission briefing begins with the, our character pilot getting a chewing out by his group commander and also then by his staffel captain, apparently when supporting the troops of 125 Infantry Division or trying to push the Russians off the bridge ahead. He dropped his ammunition quite close. I mean, he, sell, he was starting in a mortar position, which means, you know, that would be super close, danger close, as our American friends would say. Um, and apparently nobody was uh, injured by the commander <laughs> was in, of the infantry division saw it, so he complained to the HQ, it went down the pipe, so he got dressing down. But then apparently, you know, Luftwaffe was uh, quite okay with that uh, at the end because then everybody's friendly again and he's getting a new mission. Now, these incidents and obviously interfighting and complaints of Wehrmacht that Luftwaffe is not supporting them enough and then Luftwaffe saying, well, we're supporting you so much, but you're not making progress on the ground. That was happening, very historical. Also danger, close missions and friendly fire. Uh, apparently during one of the parts of the operations, uh, the Luftwaffe bombers or ground attackers actually hit a staging area of the ground troops, which led actually to massive casualties and the, f and, and the ground attack was called off. So, you know, even before the Russians were able were, were attacked by the ground troops, the attack failed because Luftwaffe basically hit their own troops. Well, happens still uh, today, despite GPS and laser guided munitions. So I think that's the unfortunate reality of the war. Now, today uh, we'll be leading a four ship formation. Um, it's very historical as the space of operations increases, smaller formations were flown by the Germans because they were just not able to uh, man a large formation. At the same time, the Soviets were able to bring more and more air assets into the, um, into the battle, creating on some um, parts of the front, uh, clear numerical superiority, taking over Napa, proceeding again over the bridgehead to Kabardinka, where our old friends, the artillery positions are, are located. Today um, in the game is the 20th of April, so a couple of days after the previous mission. He does also refer to that mission where we also attacked the same positions and were intercepted by, by LOX. Um, so very nice storyline here. Ammunition is 250 kg. Uh, bombs and you know the four aircraft will be building a so-called swarm. Um, the organization of Luftwaffe units was uh, you know an operational level split between starting from a smaller formation of a, a rota, basically a pair, a, a two-ship formation, then a four-finger formation being a swarm three swarms, so 12 aircraft constituted a staffel, basically a squadron, and then three squadrons, three staffel constituting a gruppe. Um, now, gruppe also had a stab, which would be, you know, usually four aircraft. Um, so theoretically in one gruppe you would have, you know, three times 12 plus four, so you would have 40, 40 aircraft. Uh, now, in reality, it was always less because <laughs> either the pilots or the aircraft were lacking. And then um, uh, three to four group will constitute a, a Geschwader. Um, again, it was a always theoretical, not always followed um, in the real uh, history. And then toward the end of the war, the Germans started to increasing the amount of Staffel in the Gruppe, going from three to four, um, just to make the formations uh, a, bit, a bit larger. And here, effectively, you know, we see how the Staffel falls down and operating in rather um, Schwarm strength versus fielding, you know, Staffel formation or a group, a group and size formation. So two to three or four Staffel at the same goal. Well, let's see how this mission plays out. It should be a nice afternoon at Anapa, clear weather. So let's jump into the action. So that's the fourth mission, again going out to attack the artillery position on the other side of the bay, and this time just four Fokker Wolves. So I'm leading the whole flight. Here we see the flare, so Falke leader Rakete. So most of you by now probably have guessed that uh, me screaming Rakete when starting rolling German um, code war used in Luftwaffe during World War II. 
effectively it's German word for rocket, which coincides with the naming of the flare. So effectively the leader would repeat um, that the flare for launch has been shot up and he's doing start. And behind us you see the leader, I think, of 109s, doing also some commands with the flares. Okay, we're 24, oh, 22, so the guys can catch up. Flaps are up, as you see on the indicator. Yeah, the formation there seems to be bombers lower and some cover fighters above. Four fighters, eight bombers. There's two bombers in front, or two fighters in front. One you So flares are um, you know quite efficient way of communicating in the air and has been obviously used extensively in World War II both for you know ground communication, airfield command communicating to the fighters or planes in the air, but also issuing orders to take off or indicating for the pilot if he's coming down that his undercarriage is still up, things like that. Um, now how do you facilitate shooting a flare out of a cockpit, especially on planes like now? We're flying where we don't have an ability to open the flare and the cockpit um, cannot be mid-flight. And for that you would have basically a hole. Um, and you can see it on 109s but also on focables. So can't really see it, but when if I don't forget it after landing I can poke my head out of the cockpit. You could see on the other side is the actual hole where you can look through. And when you actually press the right combination of buttons, no clue why it doesn't work here in single prayer, you can actually stick a flare gun out of your um, out of your cockpit and issue, you know, select also different colors and shoot those different colors out. Ah, here we go. So that's actually how it will look in reality. You see this would be, you know, a flare compartment. On many pictures of the Luftwaffe pilots you would see the various flares actually strapped to their lower leg, on the left and right, and you would have different colors, like green for example. And then you would store it away. So yeah, that's a very neat feature, and actually if you're um, flying heavily online with a group of people it's actually also be frequently used to indicate one position or actually you can even code ahead of the mission messages so if you see the guys shooting a red flare the guys here on the scoring they can indicate that they're actually attacking ground target and stuff like that Okay, so at 1.5k, our target altitude, we're already seeing the smokes at the bridgehead and on the other side of the bay. Okay, increase to 23 to get a bit faster there. So you see the one red light is on, indicates I have a one bomb uh, below me, it's the 250 kg SC, so basically a high explosive bomb. Um, the choice of ammunition here is a bit historical. Uh, what units such a focal wolf, especially when attacking enemy troops, will be carrying is usually German cluster ammunition. It was called or coded AB 
with a three-digit number indicating the, the weight or the size. So AB250 would be similar to the size of the bomb I'm carrying or we're carrying right now. But it actually would contain cluster ammunition. For example, SD2, basically a two kilogram um, splitter bomb. And obviously such a container would have a lot of those bomblets in it. And a formation of focal wolves would drop them at slightly higher altitude. Um, the container would basically open uh, with a times explosive charge and would release the bomblets over the enemy targets. And this obviously was extremely effective against soft targets such as artillery or ground position, trucks, things like that. Uh, so now, you know, yes, we can hit maybe one or two artillery pieces with such ammunition we have on, but if we would have cluster ammunition, would it would allow us to, you know, hit much more, uh, much more targets. So yeah, 109s are being uh, 109s and killing the uh, something that looks like locks probably again. I wonder if that guy is going to pull in front of my nose. Apparently he does that, which allows me even maybe to take a shot at him despite me carrying bomb. target than the other. My guys truthfully follow me, that's good. There's some discipline here. Ah, this guy's heavily damaged. That was terrible shooting. Yeah, I guess one and I will finish him all right. Okay. Bunch of ground targets down there. It's a line of artillery. You know, some strike marks from our previous attacks. The village of Kabardinka. Forgot to trim up the nose to help the recovery. Uh, there seems to be a little bit larger cluster down there. Gonna drop there. Bomb away and pulling out. Trimming the nose. Interesting. Not sure we bombed the uh, village now. Oh, looks a bit like uh, war crimes. Do for a straighten run here on the guns. Yeah, 
At least three artillery pieces, not bad. Awesome. Small caliber A. Oh. I'm gonna get my guys to attack some ground targets and then they were strafing it quite well last time. Not good. Never fly into the A. Funny you could even hear the guns shooting on the ground. Ah. No, it's definitely too hot. Time to get out. Okay, here we go. That seems to have made the trick. We can get out of here. Always good to have some terrain between you and the A position. Ah, there seems to be more guns there. And another quick strafe run. Yeah, well, the missions so far were very interesting, but the AI and the whole formation thing really gets a uh, B minus uh, note here. Not great at all. Wonder who are those assets in there? These Russian ground attackers, we can take a poke at them. I didn't see a charm, but whatever.
you see how close the shooting is happening really reflecting on how you know intervene the ground operations were and how hard it would be from the air to drop in the right direction it does look as IL-2 so we're gonna take a poke of those not much hope in those guys uh, filling out the orders but uh, we can try Ah, seems to be also some fighter cover, so we will take care of those first. Better shooting than last time. Boom, split. Okay, that looks again. It's ground attacker. Yeah, it is still a fighter. And here we go. So yes, 29 series, and I think LAC-3 went up to 66 series, which would have been much more potent in air combat than this um, wooden stuff here. Okay, I think there is another one in that direction. There is some combat ongoing, so let's go there. Hopefully the ground A marks the targets for us. Uh, that's a uh, very common mistake you also see online, people climbing too steep. And as before, after some strafing, I'm out of 20 mil. I'm gonna pepper him with the uh, MGs, which are plentiful here. Okay, mission accomplished, I'm out of ammo, time to go home. Oops, something struck me. I guess I've had enough. Still flying there. I'm pretty sure um, you would be able to claim that guy. Can you make it to the Rose Mountains? It looks as if run out of fuel. I made it over. Well, good luck to you, sir.
That could be my squad mate, Staffel, uh, Schwamm mate, who got nailed by that lag three down there in the hills. Here, magically, another wingman appears. I don't see another guy. Hopefully, he didn't get killed in that dogfight. Ah, no, here we go. Yeah, I'm really not getting a good grip of this whole AI mechanics here. Now obviously the big advantage of the Fokker 190 is the firepower. Um, you have two 20mm in the root of the wings and you have two machine guns in the front. Now obviously you can also equip a5 or also a3 with additional two 20 millimeter guns in the wing bring the component of the cannons to four but these would be ff versions um, in a3 i think mg151 and the a5 nevertheless um, the u3 version we're flying with the bomb load would not have those and there also have been some modifications where even the um, the main cannons were removed and, and they just left the machine guns. Um, in addition to firepower per se, the ammunition reserve is, is fantastic. It has, you know, 200, I think 200 shells per cannon, you know, a lot of uh, ammunition for the machine gun. One main deficiency people find out is obviously if you press a trigger, you trigger both the cannon and the machine guns. Now, with the 1 and 9, it's different. You have a separate button to fire your machine guns and a separate button to fire your cannon. So, we did allow you in different tactical situations to shoot only a machine gun and, if needed, add the cannon to it. So, MG don't do a huge a lot of damage, but in some high deflection shooting, and the fact that you have a lot of MGs, could be actually useful to be able to shoot it separately. And I actually read up on it. Um, and effectively it was a very specific design decision by Kurt Tank to keep it as simple as possible. And actually there have been a lot of examples and I read a couple of those um, in memoirs where s specifically younger pilots or less experienced pilots would forget to fire the cannon if the cannon was in a separate button. So the logic was, look, keep it simple, have one button. If the guy has someone in his sides, he press the button and, 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 and the plane unleashes. And it's probably, in, you know, 95% of the cases a better solution than to do it separately. If you would have outwards wing guns, they would be operated by a separate button. You can use that, but the main ammunition is always um, on one button. Okay, they did count me that like three. That's good. Cut down, and I'll go down directly to the landing. Overall good mission. Hit the artillery, strafed quite well. Um, mixed up with like threes at the way home, which would be not very uh, non-historical. I think things like that happen because there was a very busy action over that uh, bay and the bridgehead. Mm, the AI screwed a little bit. I don't know why they bombed that poor village. Sounds like a war crime. And uh, but at least they followed me into that um, into that combat. I don't see the damage 109. I'm not sure what happened with that guy. And the transport ships are probably in the same position as we were during the last mission. Turn the lights. Maybe in this magical world they will follow me. Uh, I'm pretty sure not, but like I'm still gonna order them. There we go, the white rocket or flare, so we know what's happening. We're gonna do their circle and I'll go for landing. Let's 
looking to burn the speed. Three flaps. Kind of get the head all over way out to see that uh, hole for the flare gun, but you can do it in um, if you fly alone or some servers where uh, it's not restricted. I know. Here you go. That's that's basically the outwards hole for that thingy where you stick the flare gun in. Okay, so yes, that was the mission number four in my playthrough series. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, please leave your comments in the comment section so if you have some suggestions or feedback. Always um, thankful for that. Otherwise, don't forget to subscribe. Just click that um, bell. It really helps the channel. And we see each other again in the next mission. Thank you, guys.